Imagine the year is 1999. You're at home, playing a Nintendo 64, thinking to yourself, Man, games just don't get any better than this. Hey bro! There's a new game out on the 64! No way! I'm sick of my crappy old Zelda! What's it called? A Hat in Time! No freaking way! Alright! Oh, yeah! <laughs> In Time is a 3D platformer made in the spirit of the classic Nintendo 64 games that we all know and love. And it is beautiful. I'm not kidding about that. Seriously, look at this game. It is gorgeous. Now bear in mind while you're watching this, this game is not finished yet. It is only an alpha stage, but you can tell that this game is going to be one of the best goddamn games ever lovingly crafted. I had more fun playing this 20 minute version of the game than I have had playing big budget titles of late. These games disgust me now that I have a hat in time to play. Ugh. Thanks Gabe. And it's not even finished yet, that's what's blowing my mind. The visuals for this game are ugh, gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Extremely reminiscent of Wind Waker, and that is in no way a bad thing. Even down to the little puffs of dust that Hat Girl kicks up behind her as she runs along, sends me spiraling down Wind Waker nostalgia lane. The gameplay is as smooth as Barry White's voice, and a heck of a lot of fun. My only complaint here would be, the key mechanic in taking down the Mafia guys is to jump on their heads when they glow all red, Kyle Ken style. But once you're up in the air, it's really hard to control what direction you fall. Partly because of the wonky camera in this game, but mostly because trying to control the fall in this game feels like trying to steer one of those shopping trolleys with a dodgy wheel. Plus, I'm pretty sure the hitbox of the Mafia dude's heads are the size of a grain of sand. It can get really freaking annoying. Jump! And seriously, how adorable is the music in this game? It reflects the level perfectly. Fun, light, bubbly. It just makes you want to get your hands on it and explore this world for days on end. So you can explore this first level to your heart's content. There is so much to do between collecting orbs and riding rockets, but in my opinion, the second playable level is the one that sold it for me. why this level is my favourite. One, it went from fun, light and carefree to scary as all heck in about two seconds and both styles suit this game perfectly. In this level you're sneaking around hallways and rooms trying to avoid the shadow that is Queen Vanessa. She's really freaking freaky. It puts you on edge. When, when she sees you, she runs after you Forrest Gump style. Run Vanessa, run! For a cartoony kind of game, I was impressed at how on edge I was in this level. I would almost go as far as to say I was a little scared of being caught by her. I have no idea who she is, where she comes from, or what she wants to do with Little Hat Girl. All I know is I don't want to get anywhere near her. Get me the heck away from that. The second reason why this level stands out are for its puzzles. Well thought out, fun, creative puzzles that get the player thinking just like the old days. No clues, no hints, no nothing. You need to figure out these puzzles before the Queen catches you and that's all there is to it. Ah, Nintendo 64 days. How I've missed you. Welcome home. This has been my video of a hat in time. I hope you liked it. I know it was kind of crazy and stupid. I don't normally do review or preview videos or whatever. So please like if you liked it and subscribe to my channel. I've got a lot more videos, more crazy crap like this. But yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching.